you can turn to our scripture reading today, 2 Kings chapter 22. You guys know me, I will not be before you long. Two passages real short, 2 Kings 22, verses 1 through 3, 3, and then we're going to jump to 11 through 13. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and we'll jump to 11 through 13. Those that have it, say amen. Those that are still looking for it, say hold up. Okay. And I'll be reading to you from the New International Version. And the word flows this way. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidiah, daughter of Adiah. And she was from Bozkat. Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and completely followed the ways of his father, David. Not turning aside from the right or to the left. And in the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azalea, the son of Meshalam, to the temple of the Lord. Now turn to 2 Kings 22, 11 through 13. Then it says that when the king Josiah heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robe. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, the priest, Ahiakam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Isaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Amen. The topic today is simply this, the secret ingredient, wise counsel. The secret ingredient, wise counsel. You may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask that you will continue to move, Lord. Speak to us, Father God, from your word and touch our hearts, Lord, that we may not only hear but also do what it is that you've called us to do. Bless everyone here on today, Lord, and hide me behind your cross. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. King Josiah, today we're going to talk about an eight-year-old boy. An eight-year-old boy, just amazing. When you start going through the Bible and you look at some of the different things that people have done and things that people accomplished, and we always hear about the young boy, David, all the things that he did growing up. But sometimes we don't turn enough in the Old Testament to hear about some of these other superheroes. And King Josiah is one of those characters, young man, again, eight years old. I can't reemphasize that enough. Eight years old being the king of Israel. And there's something special about Josiah, and we're going to talk about that in our passage as it relates to wise counsel. Because wise counsel, and I had to be clear about that, I didn't just want to say any type of counsel, because there's also a thing called bad counsel or bad advice. But today we want to talk about the wise part. And if you haven't seen this, another one of these B movies you probably didn't get a chance to see, but if you get a chance between now and the end of next month, see if you can rent the movie called Greater movie called Greater, movie called Greater. The movie Greater follows the true story of a young man named Brandon Burlesworth, the greatest walk-on in the history of college football. Brandon had dreamed of playing for the Arkansas Razorbacks, but he was told that he wasn't good enough to play Division I football. 
Written off by his teammates and coaches, Brandon displayed a dogged determination in the face of staggering odds. And this is a true story. The awkward kid who once was an embarrassment to his teammates and an annoyance to some of his coaches actually ended up becoming an All-American player and the 63rd player selected in the 1999 NFL Draft. All of this was possible due to the wise counsel that he received from the only coach who believed in him. Now, according to the Hebrew Bible, we have a similar branded situation with Josiah. You see, in the 18th year of his rule, Josiah ordered the high priest Hilkiah to use the tax money which had been collected over the years to renovate the temple. It was during this time that Hilkiah discovered the book of the law. And while he was clearing the treasure in the room of the temple, Hilkiah brought the scroll to Josiah's attention. Josiah consulted the prophetess, Huldah, who assured him that evil foretold in the document, and for anyone that had non-observance of these instructions, they would pay a heavy penalty, but, she said, not on this day. Why not on this day? She said, because Josiah's heart was tender, and he always humbled himself before the Lord. In our scripture today, the Bible encouraged us to take the advice of wise counselors. Proverbs eleven fourteen says it this way, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But the multitude of counselors, through them there is safety. The word translated counsel as a Hebrew nautical term which used for steering a ship. So in other words, the wisdom of godly counsel can help steer us in the right direction. Today's passage reminds us that there are several secret ingredients to success, and one of these ingredients is wise counsel. My first point is simply this. Wise counsel can move you past incredible odds. Wise counsel can move you past incredible odds. In the passage, it talks about Josiah living up to a standard up to his father David. It didn't mean his immediate father. It was really talking about King David because he came from that lineage. Because the truth be told, Josiah had to overcome some serious things. Not only was Josiah's daddy bad, if you continue to read the history of it, his granddaddy was bad. Maybe some of y'all don't know about that, but I can tell you from my perspective, Growing up, those of you that know me, and I shared this story, my granddaddy was a bootlegger. So those of y'all that don't know what that is, I mean, my granddaddy used to make his own whiskey and sell it in Arkansas illegally, <laughs> okay, illegally, right? And my granddad did not display the character that you would think you would get from a grandfather. Normally you would think that they would pass down these great knowledge and take you fishing and all these good things. I didn't get that from my granddad. He just wasn't. He was just out, just going to be real, just chasing and trying to make money. True story. Went to my grandfather's funeral. Had one I'll just describe it like this. Close friend that sat on this side of the church. And then he had another close friend that sat on the other side of the church at his funeral. And it's trying to paint a picture of what Josiah had to deal with growing up. Because although Josiah's grandfather was a king, he was a bad king. And then not only was Josiah's grandfather bad, his daddy was bad. Both of them messed up being leaders of God's people. So this is the type of stuff that Josiah had to deal with and the negativity he was already stepping into the kingship with as eight years old. Because y'all know what people were saying. He's going to be just like his daddy. <laughs> Watch him. 
We'll be getting another king in a couple of more years because he ain't going to make it. And that's how they were saying about this young man, Brandon Burlsworth, as well. Because when you look at the movie, his daddy was an alcoholic. Mom was awesome, but dad was an alcoholic. So he had to deal with a dad that was an alcoholic as well as he had a weight issue. But like I said, wise counsel can move you past these types of incredible odds. You see, wise counsel helps you overcome bad parenting, bad examples, and a lack of education. Wise counsel also helps you gain wisdom from the experience of others. And then wise counsel helps you follow through on what you are told. The key is anybody can give you advice. But when it comes to wise counsel, there's something godly going on there. That wise counsel is really to take you to a certain direction that you don't even know about at the time. I say this because a lot of us, even though we're here today and we're celebrating, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but there was a lot of us that received some wise counsel that we just did not listen to. If you don't believe me, go back and look at some of the pictures of your parents and grandparents. And Somebody told them not to wear that. They wore it anyway, thinking they was all that fly and cool. And then when you look back on it, it's like, I shouldn't have wore that. Because <laughs> we all go through this. And I want my young people to understand this. What you're going through is nothing new. It's really not. Yes, yeah, a lot of different ways that it's coming at you, but it's nothing new. And just like your mom and dad and grandparents have made it through this life, you too will make it. And don't think that we made it on our own. We all have made it based on wise counsel. Because the key about wise counsel is it helps you, again, move to the state that God wants you to end up in. And that's what's so great about it. Proverbs 15 and 22 states it this way. Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. Very important that you walk away with this today, that God wants you to understand that you need to get wise counsel because they will help you succeed. And the good thing about wise counsel, sometimes you don't even see it. It could be something that's going to happen farther down the road. I was sharing with Brother Greg this morning. We were talking. A lot of you know my struggles. I'm going to school right now and I want a little one-week semester break, start back up in October. And it's good that God can still bless you, even after you don't take the wise counsel. But like I told Brother Greg, nobody should be 51 years old going to school. I'm just going to be honest with you. Take the wise counsel when people say, get your education early. <laughs> Do what your teacher says now. Yes, God is merciful. God has grace. But your body and your mind operates a different way at 51 years old. I'm just going to be real with you. Take the wise counsel now. It will pay off. When I joined the Army, and those of you in the military back then, remember um, savings bonds. Anybody remember savings bonds from back in the day? I didn't know what a savings bond was. I'm growing up in Compton, California, joined the Army. I'm like... I'm just glad to be out. And I remember going to my first assignment in Germany, Staff Sergeant Rivera, real cool Puerto Rican brother. He was like, what you going to do? Were you here? I said, whatever you tell me, Sergeant Rivera. He said, first thing I want you to do is sign up for these correspondent courses. I'm like, what's this for? He said, it's going to help you get promoted. All right, no problem. He said, next thing I want you to do, I want you to go sign up for these saving bonds. I'm like, what's a saving bond? He said, don't worry about it. You just need to sign up for them. And he said, don't cash them in until you really have to. And I'm not talking about you ran out of money at the club or you see a nice outfit. He said, I'm talking about save this thing forever. I didn't know. So this is 1985. Fast forward, 1997. Getting ready to go to Korea. I just got engaged to Veronica. And you know how it is. You get ready to get married. You're trying to pull all your resources. You're trying to figure out how you're going to do some things. And... Lo and behold, me and my buddy was talking. I said, wait a minute. 
I think I got some money I don't know about. Called up the VA and talked to finance and found out I still have them doggone saving bonds since 1997. I mean, 87. Crazy. Talking about wise counsel. I can't take any credit for this at all. So I called up and they sent me the check and i never forget, me and my boy, you would have thought we were sitting on a million dollars. I think it was like $27,000 or something crazy amount, whatever it was. End up using the money to pay for the wedding. Everything took care of, no problems, no issues. And then they would have banked the rest of it to help us when we moved back out here. I say all that young people because wise counsel, sometimes the benefit is not right away. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes it is. But there are a lot of times where the benefit is gonna come later on down the road. And I'm telling you, that's the best type of blessing that you can receive, one that you don't even know about, one that you didn't plan for, all because you took the advice of somebody that was trying to help you. My second point, young people, is this. Wise counsel can be tough advice to follow. Wise counsel can be tough advice to follow. Why is that? Because sometimes mentors and mentees and parents and guardians, teachers that you don't like now, but you realize they had your best interest, they don't sugarcoat it. They throw cut cards. They tell you exactly what you need to do, why you need to do it. But it's a reason for that. Because first of all, they see the potential that's in you. They really do. They have your best interest at heart. When Josiah was growing up as a king, he already knew the odds were stacked against him because his granddaddy and daddy were no good. But God's grace is so awesome that he didn't have all those generational curses. He said, we're going to stop this thing right here. But it couldn't be done by Josiah by himself. You see, God put some good people around Josiah. And I can only imagine the people that were trying to be with the king when he first took over saying, well, he's only eight years old, so, you know, he's going to do what I tell him to do. I'm going to be in his hip pocket. But Josiah was surrounded around good people. They gave him good advice. That's why when he was in the king, he said, we're going to restore the temple. Because my dad and granddaddy didn't party so much that they just got crazy and buck wild. He said, but I'm going to bring things back in order. And then while they were getting ready to put the temple together, that's when they found the book of law. And the great thing about Josiah, he didn't just get the book and say, oh, that's nice, encase it, put it in something nice, and kick it to the side. Josiah said, we need to find out what's going on with this. We need some instruction on how to do this. And the good thing about Josiah, he was willing to take the advice of whatever was said by the prophetess. He didn't say, well, if she say something good, then bring it back. But if she don't, don't bring that part. Josiah was willing to face the consequences and say, we're going to do whatever it says. That's a powerful lesson, not just for young people, even us as adults. We have to be willing to take the tough advice because everything is not going to be easy. And the same thing played out with Brandon in the movie Greater because the coach told him that you got to lose some weight. And he said, and then you got to get good at what you do. Brandon, this dude was so amazing. Everything that somebody told him, he took it literally. And he worked out early in the morning every day with devotion because Brandon was a Christian. He didn't see it at the time. Didn't even know he was going to get a scholarship. He was doing all this as a walk-on. But he took the tough counsel and was unwilling to face the consequences of whatever happened. You see, wise counsel can put you in the position of being the first. I want you all to think about that. Wise counsel can put you in a position of being alone. And wise counsel can put you in a position of being out of your comfort zone. Wise counsel is tough. 
Because when everybody else is out partying and doing what they want to do, you may find yourself being the one that's still at home doing homework. When everybody else is out partying, gambling at the MGM, you find yourself here on a Friday night helping our sister Kayla with some young people trying to plant some seeds. See, everybody can't handle tough advice. And the truth be told, a lot of people don't want to hear it. Why? Because it's going to cause them to do something. And then if they don't do it, now they're held accountable. It's amazing about this thing, wise counsel. But the good thing about Josiah and Brandon, they took it and they ran with it. And because they ran with it, they were blessed beyond measure. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Proverbs 12, 15 says this way. The way of fools seems right to them. But the wise listen to advice. Please don't mess this up when y'all get home. Say, Pastor Darrell called me a fool. <laughs> the Bible says... Those that do not seek wise counsel, it generates foolish results. So if I'm generating a foolish result, take off the ISH, just maybe I'm acting like a fool at that moment. This is very important. You got to get this. And you know what the sad thing about this, young people? This goes to us as adults as well. I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes as adults, we don't take the wise counsel. We just don't. Because we think we know it all. Have y'all heard that before, young people? Oh, you think you know it all. But guess what? We do that as adults. We think we know it all. We think we got all the answers. And then we mess up. And then get mad at God because things ain't going out around the way we thought it should be. And God is like, well, you didn't even ask me about this. You just took off. But why are you coming back blaming me? I was trying to prevent you from going. But you went on your own and then prayed after the fact. God be with me. But we're talking about wise counsel. My last point, I'm going to get out of here. Wise counsel can change your destiny and the fate of those that are around you. Wise counsel can change your destiny and the fate of those that are around you. Once Josiah got the word back from the prophetess about what was going on, he could have at that moment said, we already got the blessing, so let's stop rebuilding the temple. Let's just rest on our laurels. Let's just relax. Josiah got even more determined and made sure that they carried out everything that they needed to to get back on track with God. I think that's a lesson for a lot of us on today as well. There are some unfinished business that we have based on the fact that we didn't adhere to the wise counsel. Today, God is saying, you can get back on track and do what it is that I had in store for you. And the same thing with Brandon in the movie. They got to the point where they weren't winning. They hired a new coach. He was a senior. And for the most part, when they get bringing a new coach, they want to play their own player and start over. But Brandon did something that was amazing. He went to the coach and said, Coach, I think we can win now. He said, how are you going to win now? You've been losing all this time. He said, we're only losing because the guys have been getting bad advice and they haven't been doing up to their potential. 
He said, but give me a chance to work with him. The coach gave Brandon a chance to lead his people. And I'm telling you, when you watch the movie, you can Google it after church. Look up the 1999 Arkansas Razorbacks. Find out how they turned it around. And you're going to find out the reason they turned it around because this young man, Brandon Burlsworth, a Christian man that defied the odds, listened to the wise counsel, and not only did he do it, but he ministered to his whole team, changed their whole culture, changed their whole atmosphere. He changed their destiny. And the blessing of it, not only did he change theirs, but he changed his because, again, he was drafted by the Indianapolis Colts, pick number 63. So he says, wise counsel can change your destiny and the faith of those around you. Now listen to this. When you do not seek wise counsel, you close yourself to several avenues of good advice. But when you seek wise counsel, you realize that you may be overlooking some important factors. And that's what's so good about asking for wise counsel. You might think you know it, but just to make sure, let me reach out to so-and-so. Because so-and-so seems a little bit on their game. And you know what? Ain't no shame in my game. So if they looking successful, I want to be successful. If they're getting good grades, I want to get good grades. That's what people that seek wise counsel do. They don't let their pride block them from their blessings. And then when you seek wise counsel, you multiply your chances for sound decisions and definite success. Very simple message today from the Lord. God wants us to seek wise counsel. God never intended us to do anything on our own. As great as Jesus was when he walked this earth, he still had 12 partners with him. He knew what we would need based on the situation we would put ourselves into. And like I tell a lot of people, serving the Lord is not always about getting the word from on high and hearing it from the thunderous clouds and the lightning striking in the sky, showing you what to do, giving you the answer to your questions. Sometimes it's just simple as talking to somebody that God has already put in your life to help propel you to that next level. It's really just that simple. This is not one of these messages where you got to go out and go dig deeper. God is just putting it right there in front of you. Listen to the wise counsel. Because it's so great about it, it covers everything. If you're having financial problems, God has people around that can help you financially. If you're having marital problems, God has other couples that will help walk you through this thing. If you're young and new in ministry, God has older pastors that will sit down and talk to you, and help you. If you're single and trying to make it in this life, God has other males and females that will help walk you through because they know what the dating scene was like. That's what's so good about wise counsel. It covers everybody, every stage of life, every situation that you come against. There is somebody there that God is waiting for you to talk to. And then the flip side of that, there's ministries that are set up that are looking for people with gifts because God has also called you to be a mentor to those that need this wise counsel. The thing has all of us unified. We all fit into this plan. It's a beautiful thing. As I close, please know that the Lord is the wonderful counselor of them all. And he desires to protect us through wise counselors. We need to seek out these counselors and then thank God for them. Let them help you discover a clearer picture 
of God's plan for your life. Let God's counselors move you past incredible odds. Change your destiny. And then change the fate of those that are around you. If you receive this first question, please say amen. amen.